Hi everyone, for today's lesson, we are going to be practicing some examples of using our reflection transformation. Uh, for the today's lesson, one of the things that I will need you to have is you will need something to write with, preferably some colors, and a straight edge. A straight edge can be a ruler, it can be the side of your cell phone, it can be your notebook. So anything can constitute a straight edge. So one of the things that you will need to re reference in your notebook is our transformation rules for, um, for reflections. There are four different types of reflections that we are going to be talking about. Reflections in horizontal and vertical lines and reflections over the line y equals x and y equals negative x. Remember that horizontal lines are always going to be y equals a number, and we will be counting our point up to the reflection line and reflecting and counting that same exact number of units on the other side of it to find our image. Same thing goes with vertical lines. Vertical lines are x equals equations, x equals a number equations. And in order for us to identify our reflection point, we count across our line of reflection or a reflection line. And when we are reflecting over a diagonal like y equals x, we have to use a rule. In this case, our rule would be xy changes into yx whenever we are working with the positive line or of y equals x. That is a positive diagonal line. And we also have the reflection over the line y equals negative x. That is a, a linear function with a negative slope, slope of negative 1. And its rule is xy changes into negative y, negative x, but instead of reading it as negative, negative, we read it as the opposite sign of. So this is the opposite sign of y and the opposite sign of x. Please note that whenever you're working with diagonals, you can't just count across a diagonal line in order for you to reflect. That is one of the main reasons for why we need to use these rules. All right, let's go ahead and look at example number one. For example number one, we are talking about the vertices of triangle DEF being located at 0, 2, 1, 4, and 3, 1. Before we even get started with this, what I would like you to please do is pause and plot DEF on both uh, A and B because we're going to be using the same exact ordered pairs. So triangle DEF is what our focus is. This is our pre-image. So, so far we have graphed the pre-image. You know it's a pre-image because there are no apostrophes. And then we're going to graph the reflection line. So in letter A, our reflection line is located at Y equals two. Y equals two is a Y equals a number equation. And whenever you see Y equals a number, we will be graphing a horizontal line. So I'm gonna go up to where y is equal to two, and I am going to graph a horizontal line going straight across where y is equal to two. 
it is always a dash line with arrows at the ends. So here is my, ref um, my uh, reflection line. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph the image of the triangle with the given reflection line. And the way that you do that is you simply count. If you ever have vertical lines or horizontal lines, like in this case, this was a horizontal line. All you have to do is count in order for you to find where your reflection point is. So because D is located on the line of reflection, D prime will also be located at the same spot. E prime is, since E is located two units above the reflection line, I am going to count two units below the reflection line and plot a point. This is going to be E prime. Since F is one unit below the line of reflection, I am going to count one unit above the line of reflection, and we're going to call that F prime. Now, using your straight edge, go ahead and connect the points to draw triangle D prime, E prime, and F prime. What you should see is that this image is indeed a reflection across the line Y is equal to 2. If we were to analyze our ordered pairs, D prime is going to be located at the same exact spot of 0, 2. E prime is now going to be located at 1, 0. And F prime is located now at 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 3, 3. And if you notice, Based on our original points, we had 0, 2, 1, 4, and 3, 1. We still have 0, 2, 1, but our y value changed, 1, 0, and 3. Notice that our y value changed. So all of our x values remained the same because we did not shift left or right. So our x values remained the same, but our y values changed, with the exception of d prime, and that's because... Um, D prime and D, our, D was actually on our reflection line. Let's go ahead and look at letter B. For letter B, we want to reflect in the line X equals 4. X equals 4 is a vertical line. We know that because it's X equals a number. So whenever you see X equals a number, you know that it's going to be a vertical line. So I'm going to go to where x equals 4, and I'm going to draw a vertical dashed line going through where x is equal to 4. And all you have to do is count. I won't even make you identify those ordered pairs. I'm sorry. I'll make you identify the ordered pairs, but not for the your turn. So here we go. Let's go ahead and count for D. D is 1, 2, 3, four units away from the reflection line. So I'm going to count one, two, three, four points on the other side, and we're going to label this D prime. E is one, two, three units away on the left, and so I'm going to count three units on the right and plot the point E prime. F is one unit away, so I'm going to count one unit away on the other side and label that F prime. Connecting my points to draw my triangle. Here is our beautiful reflection. And I'm going to identify these ordered pairs just to, um, once again, establish that um, what changes and what stays the same. E prime in this problem is going to be located at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, so 7, 4. 
I guess I should have probably identified D prime first. D prime is located at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 2. And F prime is located at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1. So if you look at our original ordered pairs, we still maintain the 2, the 4, and the 1, 2, 4, and 1 of the y values because the graph didn't, or the, the ordered pairs or the, the image did not shift up or down. But the x values changed because they did shift left and right. So that kind of analysis is something that you will be asked to do on a test. But what I would like you to do right now is the U try. I want you to try graphing triangle ABC in both of these, um, in these grids. And I would like you to reflect in the line Y equals four and reflect in the line X equals two. You do not need to identify the ordered pairs. I just want you to count um, and come up with the images. Um, please pause the video as you do this and then we will see how well you did. All right, here is my answer key. Let's go ahead and see. Did you, hopefully you were able to graph triangle ABC and ABC would have been located in different spots because this first graph had, is just like the first quadrant and the second graph has all four quadrants in it. So the graph, even though it's the same ordered pairs, the graphs are a little bit different. And when we reflect in the line y equals 4, hopefully you ended up with your um, a prime, b prime, c prime being above the line y equals 4. And hopefully when you graphed x equals 2, you noticed that we were counting on each side with c and c prime being located on the line of reflection. So that is what your answers were supposed to be. All right, let's go ahead and move on. Looking at example number two, we have the vertices of triangle L, M, N are given. Let's pause and graph triangle L, M, N on both grids. All right, cool. So I have graphed this pre-image and then I'm going to graph the reflection line. So in this problem, letter A, our reflection line is the x-axis and the x-axis is already drawn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a dashed line over the x-axis. The x-axis is located at y equals zero. It is a horizontal line located at y equals zero. We, even though it's already on there, we still mark it up with a dashed line. Then we're gonna graph the image of the triangle with the given reflection and label our vertices. So I am going to count, and we have um, L, is one, two, three units above the, uh, the x-axis. So I'm gonna count one, two, three units below. And this L is prime is located at one, two, three 
one, two, three. So negative three, negative three. M is two units above, so I'm gonna count two units below. This is M prime, and M prime is located at one, negative two. N is one unit above the line, so I'm gonna count one unit below and label that N prime. That is located at negative two, negative one. What do you guys notice? Well, what stayed the same was our x values, negative three, one, and negative two. But what happened to the y values? The y values became opposite signs. Opposite signed numbers. So a trick, if you're ever asked to identify the ordered pairs given a reflection in the line y equals zero or the, uh, the x axis, all you have to do is change the signs of the y values and you have your answers. That's going to be your image. Let's go ahead and look at letter B. In letter B, we want to reflect triangle LMN in the Y axis. The Y axis is a vertical line. And because it's a vertical line, its equation is X equals zero. Vux and hoy. So let's go ahead and count. L is one, two, three units to the right. So I'm gonna count three units on the other side, or I'm sorry, I'm counting three units, one, two, three, and I'm gonna count three units on the other side, one, two, three. And I'm gonna plot it and label it L prime. M is one unit away from our reflection line, so I'm gonna count one unit on the other side and label that M prime. N is one, two units away from the reflection line, so I'm gonna count one, two units on the other side and label it N prime. What you should notice is that our shapes of our, all of our triangles that we've drawn today have been maintained. The thing that has changed is its orientation. It's kind of, it looks a little bit different. It's still the same shape, but it looks a little bit different. Like it's been reflected, haha. -ha. So let's go ahead and identify the ordered pair. Since this is in the X axis, or the Y axis, we can pretty much guess what's going to change and what's going to stay the same. But let's identify the ordered pair for L prime. It's located at one, two, three, one, two, three. So three, three. M prime was, is now going to be located at negative one, two. And N prime is now located at two, one. So what stayed the same this time was our Y values, three, two, one, three, two, one. Our uh, X values, however, became opposite negative three to positive three, one to negative one, and negative two to positive two. So a shortcut is to note that if you're reflecting in the y axis, the x values this time become the opposite. I just want you to be aware of that relationship because you will be asked questions like that on your test. Um, so I want you to feel comfortable with that analysis and being able to make decisions based on what you see in the graphs. All right, let's go ahead and move, uh, uh, flip the page. And we're gonna talk about the coordinate rules once again. For the coordinate rules for the line y is equal to x, that rule is x, y changes into y 
comma, X. So nothing changes. And that's exactly what we are going to be doing in letter A. We're going to be reflecting in the line Y equals X. The other rule that we had is for the line Y equals negative X. That rule is XY changes into negative Y or opposite of Y comma opposite of X. And we will be using that in letter B. So before, just like we did before, we're going to graph A, B, and C individually before we even start this problem. Go ahead and graph that on both graphs. So now, the next thing I want you to do is I would like you to please go ahead and graph the reflection line of y equals x. Remember that the y equals x, this is really y equals x plus 0. So the first thing you're going to plot is 0, 0, and then you're going to plot a rise 1, run 1. And all you need are two points in order to graph a line. And so on this line, you're going to be graphing a dashed line. Next, we want to take our ordered pairs that we have, like A is negative 2, 1, and we want to apply the rule. So that means that A prime is going to be located at, instead of negative 2, 1, it becomes 1, negative 2. B prime, instead of being 3, 3, becomes 3, 3. Haha, ha, look at that. B is on the reflection line. And C prime, instead of being at 0, negative 3, it will be at negative 3, 0. You are simply switching your x and y values. So I am going to plot 1, negative 2. And I'm going to label it A prime. We have B prime and B are located at the same spot, so I'm going to label that B prime. And then C prime is at negative 3, 0. And I'm going to label that point C prime. And to the very best of my ability, I'm going to graph or plot, um, or I'm sorry, graph or draw triangle A prime, B prime, and C prime. Let's go ahead and look at letter B. For letter B, we want to draw in our reflection line of y equals negative x. So what that is, is it's y equals negative x plus 0. So we always plot 0, 0. And then our slope is negative 1, so that means we go down 1 to the right 1. And to the very best of our ability, we're going to draw a, a dash line going through these points, extending across the grid. Okay. 
from here, we're going to use our rule of changing the X and Y values and switching them, but not just switching their order, also switching their sign. So A prime will become negative one, positive two. So the negative two and the one switch spots and they switch signs. B prime will become negative three, negative three. They both of these numbers change their signs. And C prime becomes three, zero. They switch positions and their signs. So I'm gonna plot negative one, two, and label it A prime. Then I'm gonna plot negative three, negative three, and label it B prime. And then I'm gonna plot three, zero and label it C prime. To the very best of my ability, I'm going to draw as neat of a triangle as I can. I always think these look so cool. I'm going to graph or identify what the reflection is and you should be able to see like the connection between the points it does it should look like um, they are equidistant away from that um, that reflection line we have one more example for today and that example is um, very similar to the one that we had in a previous lesson and this is a matching game so these two angles match each other. So if you can imagine that there was a reflection that took place here and you're trying to see what matches with what, we would have 30 matching with 6 times B minus 5 and we would have 7A minus 4 matching with 146. So I'm going to go ahead and find A first by making the 75A minus 4 equals 146. I'm going to add four to both sides and I end up with 75A is equal to 150. Dividing both sides by 75, I find that A is equal to two. When it comes to identifying B, I'm going to set six times B minus five equal to 30. Distributing six to each term, I end up with six B minus 30 is equal to 30. I'm going to add 30 to both sides and I end up with 6B is equal to 60. Dividing both sides by 6, we find that B is equal to 10. A problem like this is going to be on the test. So I want you to make sure that you feel comfortable playing a matching game using reflections. And that is the end of today's lesson. If you have any questions over anything, please make sure that you email me. Otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful day.